Hi folks, welcome to this video from Orbital Tube which is about the electrolysis and restoration of a tow bar or tow hitch for a vehicle. So I got this tow hitch pretty cheap from a uh, scrapyard locally and as you can see it's in pretty bad state. It's been lying outside. The car that was actually on was exposed, the back bumper was exposed leaving the, the tow bar actually all exposed as well. And as you can see if we have a I have a quick zoom in here of what the tow bar actually looks like. You can see that layer of rust that's on there it looks pretty grotty. And you can even see that uh, some of it looks like it's just about to uh, fall off and chip off. So the tow ball and the electrics seem to be fine. They were kind of a little bit protected by a cover, so they're uh, in better shape. So first job that we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to take this thing apart and just see what kind of state it's in. To do the electrolysis part of this, we're actually going to use a wheelie bin because it was the only thing that I had lying around that actually could contain uh, all of the solution that we're going to need uh, to perform the electrolysis on the tow bar. So I've just taken the tow bar apart with this impact wrench that, wrench that I've got here. So we just undo the two bolts holding in the tow ball and we take that apart and strip the tow bar down as much as possible to do the electrolysis. There's also, uh, as well as the tow ball part of the um, hitch here, we also have the electrics which are on its own little uh, plate. So as you can see with the tow ball, tow ball off, uh, it's actually not in too bad a shape. Um, if we look at it zoomed in a little bit, you can see it's not too bad at all. So that'll, that'll clean up nicely with just a wire brush. And the electrics are looking okay as well. They look like they work anyway, so they'll be fine. So you can see the layer of rust that we're trying to get to. So before we do the electrolysis, we're going to have to try and get to that uh, that final layer of rust. And by doing that, what we'll do is we'll use a variety of methods here. The first thing that I tried here was just a regular paint scraper, uh, just to just to try and remove any of the loose stuff because some of the some of the rust actually was quite loose and it would just come off um, with a basic scrape. So as you can see, some of it popped off straight away, making things easier for uh, some of the more uh, manual methods that we're going to use. So next up, we, um, we're going to use a hammer here just to chip off any of the loose rust. Um, and this works to a certain extent if the rust is brittle, but in some cases, some certain parts of the tow bar here, you can see it actually working and then in others it doesn't. So it just depends on how brittle the rust is and if it's an, if it's an actual layer of rust. And then the next thing we're going to do then is actually crack, crack open the, um, crack at the angle grinder and start to grind down some of the rust especially in areas where there's paint left behind as well because we want to try and get through the paint as well because we're going to repaint this thing just in case there's actually rust underneath the paint as well so as we're as we're doing the angle grind we need to wear a dust mask here due to all the, the dust that's coming off it it's very important to do that uh, because otherwise it, you'll be inhaling it and it's rotten stuff so just get your dust mask on when you're doing this and with a little bit of angle grinding done, we'll, we'll switch back to the hammer method again. We'll just start chipping off some of the loose stuff again. And uh, the hammer actually, it, it does actually work to a certain extent to, ch to chip off layers of rust. So if you can see that the, the, um, the rust actually forming layers on top of the metal, that's a good way of getting rid of rust. And we'll use a combination of the hammer here and the angle grinder just to get us back to... to um, back down to the uh, actual metal and the layer of rust that's actually attached to the metal. So here you can see we're back to back to bare metal in some places and we're back to paint and back to the rust layer. So this is kind of what we want to get to to get the electrolysis done. So next up here then is I've got an old brake test that we're going to use as our sacrificial anode for the electrolysis. So we need to sacrifice another piece of metal which will which which the rust will actually move towards as we're doing the electrolysis of the tow bar. So we're going to use this as our sacrificial piece of steel here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make up a solution here using uh, soda crystals, which you can buy in the laundry department of a lot of places. And as you can see there, the main ingredient in this is sodium carbonate. This particular one can be bought pretty cheaply. I think I got this for around 70p in my local uh, uh, general, general goods shop. And we can we can just add some boiling water to try and dissolve it down a bit to try and make it uh, dissolve fully into the solution. You probably don't have to use as much as I'm going to use in this solution. I've probably gone a little bit overkill. If anything, they say that um, there are certain ratios to be met in terms of how you dissolve this. Uh, because I'm doing this in a wheelie bin, I, I, it was going to take too much time to try and figure out um, how much water was in there and how much I'd need for the tow bar. So... I uh, just added in about half of the pack and that did the job. 
So we're going to add this into the wheelie bin now. As you can see, the tow bar is in there and the an sacrificial anode is sitting there in, in there as well, connected with a coat hanger so that we can apply electricity to it. And the next step then is just to add the water. And it takes a while to do this. You're better off getting a cup of tea while this is uh, filling up, surprising the amount of water that it takes to fill a wheelie bin. And you can see there exactly what's going on. I've got the red lead connected to the sacrificial anode and the black lead connected to the tow bar that we're trying to de-rust. And you can see straight away some of the bubbles that we're getting off the, the electrolysis process. In this case, it's actually hydrogen gas being given off by the process. Um, so um, make sure you do this somewhere vented because hydrogen can be dangerous on its own. So this is the setup here. We've got a standard car charger which is connected to, the, to the, the power and as you can see I've got the leads connected up to both the tow bar and the sacrificial anode. Best type of car charger to use is an old one so the more modern chargers have more built in circuitry to protect themselves from shorting and stuff so try and get yourself an old one works better. As you can see as the, the bubble again there's another shot of the bubbles appearing just uh, through the electrolysis. And surprising how quickly it actually starts to react. As soon as I connected it up, you could see the reaction happening straight away. So in this case, I had to leave the tow bar sitting in the solution and perform the electrolysis for a number of hours. Because the tow bar didn't fit fully down into the wheelie bin as well, I had to actually flip it over midway. So that kind of took a little bit, that meant it take, took a little bit longer than I was expecting when we were doing it. But you can see here, the, the water has turned pretty murky with all of the rust that's going into it. As well as in the tow bar, I also had to do some of those other brackets that you saw at the start of the video that are part of the whole thing. They actually bolt into the frame of the car. And to do that, we just used exactly the same method with a coat hanger and hanging those off a piece of wood across the middle of the wheelie bin. So with our first passes of electrolysis done, um, the tow bar actually cleaned up pretty well. It cleaned up a lot of the surface rust. I got it to a state where it could be cleaned a little bit further with mechanical cleaning, just to, to clean it up a little bit more. These uh, these items, if you leave steel out in any length of time outside in, uh, in the rain at all, it'll reform the rust. So it's important, if you do this, don't leave it sitting outside. Um, try and get it cleaned up and painted as soon as you do the electrolysis. So what we're going to do to, to do the, the next bit of mechanical cleaning is we're, we've got an angle grinder and we've got something called a cup wheel which is just like a basically a rotary version of a wire brush and saves you a lot of manual work and it just rotates around at high speed it has a series of wire bristles on it and as you can see it does a really quick job of getting rid of surface rust So with the angle grinder cleaning up those brackets very nicely, we'll go back to the tow bar just to have a look at what it looks like now after the mechanical cleanup with the wire cup wheel. And as you can see, it's in, it's looking in really good condition here. You can see that all of the rust has pretty much been cleaned up. We still have the pitting on the surface, but everything's been converted into that dark metal again. We also have to consider some of the nuts and bolts that we're going to be using. And this as well you can either use electrolysis on those or a, a good way of cleaning up nuts and bolts is actually just to put them in a bath of white vinegar as well because they're kind of a little bit more intricate and stuff uh, it can be harder to get good contact with the solution so sometimes the vinegar is just easier for the uh, nuts and bolts and as you can see these are the brackets after we've done all of the mechanical cleaning and what we're going to do is we're just going to give them a quick blast with some brake cleaner just to take any of the old grease off them just to get them cleaned down and just a final little manual wire brushing with the the, uh, the wire brush here as well so once we have all of this done everything's prepped and pretty much ready for paint once it's cleaned down and we have a good surface to work with so we've just hung the, the tow bar here off my rotary washing line which is actually a strange place to put it but it works quite well as a painting station and we just we just applied a thick layer of hammerite black paint, which is straight to metal or straight to rust paint actually. So with two two coats of that applied to the tow bar, it's looking much much better. And as you can see, we've given it the layer of protection that it needs to stop any further rust from forming. Hopefully, having stopped the rust in its tracks now, and with this layer of 
paint on the tow bar we can actually stop any further rust from forming and the tow bar will be serviceable for another uh, good few years. So here's just a couple of before and after shots just to show you the difference in the brackets of the tow bar. This is before and this is after and you can see just the difference in how much bare metal we've gone back to. This bracket is totally back to bare metal again and ready for painting and we put the tow bar on the car after painting and put it into use. So I've got loads of use out of this tow bar so far and it's held together very well. Um, as you can see it doesn't cost the earth to, to uh, get a second hand tow bar and to restore it back to a very serviceable condition. And it can be very useful for towing timber and various things around your home. So thanks for watching guys and if you like this video please consider hitting like and subscribe.